Okay, if we're out in space uh, above the Earth and we're looking down and we're seeing the sunlight incident on the Earth, what's the, rel the ratio between the amount of energy in the form of photons beaming down and covering half the Earth at all times and the amount of energy we're using now or could conceivably need in the... Well, I don't the have the, the numbers in, in my head, but uh, you can say without any doubt that we have enough energy coming down to the Earth free of charge that can be converted with existing technology to meet all of our energy needs uh, plus today. Uh, you can meet some, all your needs with solar and then you have wind which could meet uh, a good chunk of, of your needs and then there are growing things that could add to it. The renewable energy supply is not only everlasting, it's super abundant. Uh, and I'm talking about converting it with today's sort of T-model technology uh, for conversion. Talk about a, a few different methods of converting incident photons into electricity and, and how they stack up against well, each the, other. The great, the interesting thing is that the photovoltaic cell, uh, which is a prime piece of technology, was not developed by private enterprise. It was developed as part of the space program when we needed to have a source of electricity on the spacecraft. It has been improved and uh, it now uh, is a commercial product that convert uh, the, the solar power into electricity. Uh, then and now we have, and that's mainly based on silicon, but we just are now in a solar revolution. We have got thin film solar, which is a, a entirely different technology based upon different materials uh, where you have uh, stuff as thin as a newspaper and the first batch uh, commercially was delivered I think in December by nano solar uh, for under two dollars a watt uh, which is the equivalent to what a coal-fired power plant costs. So uh, while the general public doesn't know it, uh, what we have going on is a technological revolution in solar power. In addition to that, there's the technology for large-scale solar plants in the desert uh, with uh, what I, I would call uh, much more efficient photovoltaic cells combined with mirrors where all the heat is focused on one highly efficient cell. Or alternatively, uh, the, the, there, there is the, the technology where the mirrors heat oil and heat steam in a turbine, just like an ordinary power plant. And, and uh, those kinds of plants, the costs are now down to something where they're very comparable to what a natural gas-fired plant would cost and comparable to what a coal-fired plant that actually tried to sequester the coal uh, would cost. But why would you want to have poison when you can have uh, clean, renewable energy for about the same price? And uh, and it doesn't have the external costs that the coal or the nuclear power would have. So uh, what we need is to educate the American people and form the mother of all coalitions, which is that the people worried about nuclear proliferation, the people worried about our dependence on imported oil, the people worried about local air pollution, the people worried about global warming, should all come together. That means all of us that includes everyone, should come together and stage what I think has got to amount to the equivalent of the second industrial revolution. Uh, we've got to recognize we're talking about fundamentally changing uh, the civilization from one dependent on the remains of the dinosaurs uh, to one that just takes advantage of the natural forces here on earth and puts them to use. Now, what's, what strategies would you recommend to mobilize that coalition? Well, in a democracy, uh, if the people are ignorant, uh, you perish. Uh, now, every author thinks that uh, their book is gonna change the world. I'm not naive. Uh, I hope I'm making a small contribution. But we need to gather an information uh, Cadre. We, we, we need to educate uh, the American people. Uh, 
in a democracy, ordinarily leaders don't lead, they follow. Uh, and uh, right now, I don't think that we have a critical mass of people who really know and understand that what we have is an energy supply that is uh, promoted by the poisoners. And they have the money, and they're giving us TV ads and propaganda and phrases like clean coal and safe nuclear power or green nuclear power that is just complete baloney and essentially lies and that the truth doesn't have equal time. Uh, the future doesn't have an advocate, uh, but it, it can in the form of knowledge of the American people. It's going to be a combination of Americans using their purchasing power and their knowledge to uh, give a spinal to the politicians. And it's going to be tough because I, you know, I worked for the U.S. Senate for a while and I re remember very clearly one day we were on the Senate floor and I was uh, suggesting to Senator Hollings of South Carolina who I was working with some amendments to a bill that would be in the public interest. And he turned to me and he says, Dave, you don't understand. This is a cash and carry Senate. Uh, these fellows hadn't been bought, but they've been rented for this bill. And these amendments I'm offering are falling on deaf ears. Uh, you know, we, we, we just have to fight another day. Uh, and the special interests, uh, the, the oil companies, the coal companies, the automobile companies, uh, the, the nuclear power, General Electric owns NBC, for God's sakes. Tim Russer is on Meet the Press suggesting nuclear power. Uh, we're up against uh, most of the money in this world and in the media. So it's, it's really a David versus Goliath fight at this time. Well, you're David. Yeah, but we, we need a lot of Davids. We need uh, millions of Davids. But if there were a million people that said to the automobile industry, we're not going to buy another car until it's a plug-in hybrid that runs on electricity. And if we said to the electric utility industry, you know, you've got to have more green power. And we passed a law that outlawed new coal-fired plants and new nuclear plants. I can tell you, I have been a utility executive most of my life. And the only way that you're ever going to get the electric utility industry to really embrace renewables is to outlaw the toys they're playing with. Uh, they are used to taking orders. They've been regulated over the years. We pass a law and says no more nukes, no more coal-fired plants. We use natural gas as a bridge. Uh, you build renewables, you'll see a true renaissance in renewable energy. But as long as you have halfway measures and you have goals that say in 2050 you have to do this and that, uh, nothing's going to happen in 2008. And if it doesn't happen in 2008, you know, we don't have any uh, contract with the Lord about uh, being alive and well in 2050 uh, for the planet and certainly not for us individuals. Uh, Los Angeles is the capital of cars of, of, the, of the planet. Uh, you have a chapter in Winning Our Energy Independence about a uh, future Los Angeles that's uh, uh, sustainable. Uh, uh, share that with our audience. Well, I do think that we have an opportunity here in LA to show some true leadership. And uh, my friend, uh, the mayor, Antonio Villarigosa, cares about these issues as much as anyone on earth. He's only recently got his own person in as head of his Department of Water and Power. I think he's been on the job seven days, uh, David Nahai. I have great hopes that uh, that department is going to take the leadership in several ways. One, uh, with the construction of large-scale solar power plants and becoming a solar utility where rather than waiting for small-scale entrepreneurs to sell a few panels here and there, we blanket this city with solar panels on the roofs uh, and the department just owns them and installs them just like they would a coal or gas-fired power plant. Is, is a proposal to do that uh, pending anywhere? Well, yeah, in my book and on David's desk <laughs> and, uh, and uh, the mayor, well, mayor is giving him a, a little bit of time to uh, come up with a plan, but I, uh, I was present when the mayor uh, laid down 
uh, a mandate and said, I want, I want some of these programs on my desk yesterday. So you, you're saying that the, the uh, resources of the D LADWP would be expended to buy solar panels, put them on roofs of cooperating citizens and businesses right. and, and uh, generate uh, solar power uh, from them. Yeah, just the same way they're doing with natural gas or coal now. They would own the thing. That's my idea. And, and to make that happen, the LA City Council would need to pass that. That's all. Well, that would they'd all be for it. I mean, they just need to come up with a plan. I mean, the the this town is is alive with greenness, and the mayor uh, is just anxious to see something like this happen. How would a feed-in tariff? And explain to our listeners who don't well, know that. that uh, say, so explain it first and say whether it's enough or whether gimmicks it's gimmicks that where you're relying on the market to do it. My own view is that the solar industry is fragmented and small and we haven't got time to win this thing like a guerrilla war one roof at a time uh, there is no reason why the utilities in this country should not become solar utilities and make investments in solar power both big ones in the desert and small ones smaller ones on the roof there's so many warehouses with flat roofs in la I mean, my vision uh, is that when you fly into Los Angeles 10 years from now, the only thing you should see is solar panels on all the roofs of all the buildings. Why aren't there solar panels on all the roofs of all the buildings through the Action Utilities today? Well, for one thing, the price of solar power was very quite high. It's just now coming down. And uh, uh, Antonio Villarosa wasn't, wasn't the mayor. Uh, there wasn't uh, there wasn't the leadership. Are, are there vested bureaucratic interests within utilities that don't want to see distributed uh, 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 generation? Of course there is, and that's why uh, it's taken a couple of years uh, to get our own people in as the general manager, and and and, and uh, it's a bureaucracy. I used to run it. I know. I mean, you've got to break some crockery to get anything done in a utility. Uh, let me let me just be blunt about it. The A students in electrical engineering uh, went into electronics. The B students went into communications. I mean, I was a C student <laughs> at Georgia Tech, <laughs> and I went into uh, the electric power industry, but all kidding aside, there's not a lot of innovation uh, in the utility industry. Uh, there hasn't been. It, it's an industry that attracts people that want to do tomorrow what they did yesterday. So it takes real concerted leadership to turn it around, and it's just now beginning to happen. But the other thing is that the price of photovoltaics has been going down like a rock, and it's just now getting to the point where you wouldn't have to increase the rates uh, so much in order to uh, implement it. So, so you're saying that there is a, 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 con a convergence now of bureaucratic openness, political leadership, and technological development that makes feasible a solar utility for Los Angeles. Yeah, yes, except that I wouldn't put too much emphasis on the bureaucratic openness part. All right. That still has to be overcome. Then, then what concrete steps ought to be, ought to, you and I take this afternoon to mobilize the people of Los Angeles and the, the elected well, officials of Los Angeles Well, I think the to, people to of LA need to know that this is possible. They need to give uh, Mayor Villaraigosa encouragement to say, well, you know, if this, our electric rates are two-thirds of what they pay in the county. Anyhow, they're dirt cheap that, okay, so the rates may have to go up two or three percent, but our health bill will go down and we will create jobs here in the city and we're all for this. Do it, do it, do it. In other words, uh, if peop more people knew about it and he had more, more people coming to the DWP board meetings and saying, why, asking the questions you're asking, it would happen faster. You know, even good people in office need encouragement. And, and so, so really the, the next concrete uh, small step is for people to go to the next board meeting of the uh, LADWP and say, we want solar energy now. That's right. It, it, it would be almost revolutionary if 200 people showed up at a Department of Water and Power a board meeting and, and made that statement. Do you know offhand when the next one is? We'll have to look it up. They okay. meet on Tuesdays. I think they, they meet very often on Tuesday. Okay. Um, I but, want, but, yeah. but this town is unique. It's got its own utility, and it's got real good sun, and it's got a constituency that really wants to go green. Uh, and is willing, I think, 
based on polls I've seen, to pay a bit more in their electric bills, recognizing they're smart enough to know that this over time will mean they'll pay less in their health bills and that we have a better chance of avoiding the worst part of global warming. If you want to protect the beach for your grandchildren, you'll put a solar panel on your house today. Because if you don't, uh, there's a good chance that the sea will rise and the beach will be gone. Well, we're close to the beach now, so I think that's good practical advice as well. I want to thank you uh, for talking to us today on the Utopia News Channel. I hope we can talk more in the future as the movement to make uh, L.A. the premier solar city on the planet uh, uh, gathers momentum. Thank you. I, I just think this interview would be incomplete if I didn't ask this one question at the end. When it comes to material goods, we need to start asking how much is enough because we can't meet these goals if we just keep buying more and more stuff and the Chinese and the Indians and others follow our advice. Well, talk about that uh, uh, ethically and geopolitically. Well, it's, it's more than a moral issue. It's a practical issue as well because if you postulate six billion people on Earth with a standard of living even half of what we've got, uh, you are digging up so much, manufacturing so much, transporting so much and disposing of so much and using needing so much energy that to try to clean it all up the mountain is going to be so steep I don't think we can climb it in time so we've got to taper uh, the, the, the slope of the mountain in, in order to achieve uh, a total renewable energy in time enough to avoid the worst impacts of, of global warming and also I think that uh, it, it's time that we ask ourselves you know how many sweaters do you need? Well, let, let, let me follow up on, on that question then, because I, I had almost uh, uh, dared to hope that the, the problem would be solved if 200 uh, people came to the next DWP meeting. And now I think you're recommending a, a transformation of consciousness of uh, 300 million people in terms of what makes a good life That's and, right. and what, what, uh, what uh, they're on earth to do. And, and we need to first talk about it and then do some practical things like change the tax code to give incentives for the dur durability of goods rather than the depletion allowance. And quite frankly, the idea that uh, Governor Huckabee has about a consumption tax, it's interesting to me that no one has recognized that that would be the strongest uh, environmental protection measure we could have. Uh, say more about how it would work, and, and you well, might it, want to throw it, in something it, about the regressivity for poor people. If you, if you take people. the taxes off of income, right. and you're taxing consumption, right. you exempt food and basics. But then, uh, if you're buying a lot of stuff, you're paying taxes on the stuff, so you're going to buy less. And this will dampen our appetite somewhat, and we'll spend our money uh, on uh, things that are uh, less destructive of the environment. Well, without being too uh, na uh, seemingly naive, uh, uh, Los Angeles is not only the capital of, uh, of uh, solar incident uh, radiation, it's also the capital of conspicuous consumption. That's in right. Which it's, a, it's a way of life, a way of economy, uh, the basis of the political system, and what most people spend most of their time doing. How, how are you suggesting that that be uh, transitioned? Just simply start off by having people of middle income and better look around and ask themselves, if you give your kids so many damn presents that they won't even open all of them, isn't there something sick about your way of living? And ask yourself, you know, uh, how many suits and how, how much stuff do you really need? And maybe we ought to start thinking uh, more of spending our money on things that will do uh, more good for society and more good for us. Uh, you know, I, I don't I don't want to sound like a preacher man, but all I know is that if the rate of material consumption uh, continues at the pace that we have and the rest of the world is catching up with us, I don't see how, uh, just looking at the numbers, we can possibly avoid uh, the problems of global warming and everything else. The mountain will be so steep that we have to climb that we won't be able to climb it in time. The Chinese are building a, a coal-fired plant a, a week, uh, or the equivalent thereof. Uh, what strategy would you recommend for uh, that we pursue or help them pursue or that they pursue in India and China and other parts of the developing world 
to skip the petroleum age and move to the renewable age we, right gotta, away. We've got to build huge, big solar power plants ourselves. All the preaching and talking won't do it. Right. But if we, they can come over to America and go out in the Mojave Desert and see us having solar power plants that produce as much power as coal or nuclear, uh, they're pretty smart people. Uh, they will. They will follow our. They're following our lead with the poisons. They will follow our lead. Uh, with renewables if we will just lead and it will restore our status in the world as a leader. There's a there's a proposal uh, on the table in Europe uh, generated by the Club of Rome and supported by uh, Prince Hassan bin Talal of, of Jordan to build what's called Humana Desert Tech which are huge solar concentrating power stations all across North Africa and throughout the Middle East use the electricity for local economic development desalinization of water and feed the surplus into Europe. Does that sound like a good idea to you? Well, it's an idea that uh, a man named Saud El Faisal, who's now the Secretary of State of Saudi Arabia, and I had in 1973 in his hotel room before the oil, Arab oil embargo. It's, it's a dream that a lot of people have had, but we got to go beyond dreaming and start doing. It's, it's pretty if, near midnight on that clock if, for this civilization. If the politicians don't act, uh, themselves uh, would an initiative in California to to say raise uh, ten billion dollars in uh, uh, state bonds to build uh, mass photovoltaic and uh, concentrating solar power systems in the Mojave pay off the bonds with the electricity and uh, have uh, I don't a, a think we I don't think we need an initiative on a ballot I I, I think that uh, the Department of Water and Power and other utilities in California are going to do that within the next next year. I think we're closer to the solar revolution. I'm more hopeful than perhaps I sound because I, I think that the technology is is about to become so unmistakably clear and available and people are now interested in the subject. We just have to widen the circle of people that we're, we're talking to. But there is an initiative that uh, uh, Dan uh, Sperling uh, is uh, funding that will require the utilities to go to 50% renewable that will be on the ballot next year and it's worth looking at but it's going to take the enthusiastic interest of the people uh, to really make this happen and uh, the leadership will follow uh, that's the way it happens in America okay I want to thank you for making the case well thank you for taking the time <laughs>